My secretary sent me a meme last week. It's a picture of Forrest Gump with a caption, and just like that, we're all televangelists. Well, I shudder at the thought, but here we are. Last week, Pastor Ken published a vlog about divine judgment, and it got us thinking about our current situation with the coronavirus. I had an experience in South Africa not too many years ago. I was teaching a class at one of our Zion Bible schools. At the end of the class, I was asked if HIV AIDS was God's judgment on the African continent. The subject matter of the class actually had nothing to do with HIV AIDS, but that question was certainly on everyone's minds, and it still is in many parts of Southern Africa. One of our missionaries in the region told me that he could go to a funeral every day of the week because so many were dying from AIDS. Well, that student was convinced that God was judging his country and he was using AIDS to do it. My answer to this question really didn't satisfy him because I basically told him what was in last week's vlog. I couldn't say if it was God's judgment or not. God certainly judges his people and the world through a variety of ways. His specific judgments and the means he used to judge are clearly recorded in the Bible. God's nature and his goodness towards us haven't changed. So I believe that he continues to act and to extend his righteous judgments even today. What I can't do is get into the specifics of what constitutes divine judgment in the modern world. Like I said, this answer really didn't satisfy my student, and maybe you weren't really satisfied by my answer here or Pastor Ken's last week. Do you want to dig a little deeper into this topic? If so, I'd suggest you start looking at some of the ways God interacted with his people as it's laid out in the Bible. Our current sermon series is from the book of Isaiah, and God used this prophet to inform his people about his coming judgments. What's striking in Isaiah is how God lays out the anatomy of his judgments. Let me just give you a few examples. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 7, uh, King Ahaz is worried about two neighboring kingdoms that are plotting his demise. God tells him not to worry about these two kings. God even said to Ahaz, I'll give you a sign that what I'm saying is true. Well, Ahaz didn't believe that God would give him a sign, and he didn't ask for a sign. He actually just wanted to take care of the problem himself. So God said, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Now, if you keep reading in this chapter, you'll learn that these two kings were invaded by Assyria, and Ahaz himself suffered God's judgment both from Egypt and Assyria. Now, this prophecy of God's judgment gave Ahaz a time frame in which this judgment would be carried out, and it revealed a piece of God's ultimate plan of salvation through Emmanuel, God with us. This is judgment with hope. It's judgment with restoration. It's judgment with salvation, and it's the anatomy of how God judges his people. Another interesting example is God's judgment in Isaiah chapter 19. Now this time God is judging Egypt and the anatomy of his judgment goes something like this. God brought social and civil divide to Egypt. He said that Egyptian would fight against Egyptian, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city. This was a description of sharp social and civil divide and it led to invasion. The second phase of God's judgment was economic collapse. The Nile River would dry up and all the commerce associated with that life-giving river would be gone. The third judgment was that politicians would become fools. He doesn't really elaborate on what he means by that except for it makes everybody sick to their stomach. Am I describing anything familiar to you? Sharp, civil, and social divide, economic collapse, politicians acting like fools. Well, if you keep reading in Isaiah 19, you'll come to one of the most amazing prophetic judgments in the Bible. There are actually five of them, but I'll only talk about one, the last one, God's judgment on Egypt. 
It predicts a time when former enemies would unite in worship together. God said this, In that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. Egyptians and Assyrians will worship together. In that day the Lord will be third along with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing on the earth. The Lord Almighty will bless them. Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. Egyptian, Assyrian, Israeli, all united in worship of the Lord Almighty. Who in their wildest dreams would imagine this happening? This is judgment with hope. It's judgment with restoration. It's judgment with salvation. And it's the anatomy of God's judgment. And it's a beautiful thing to behold. Now, I know most of you are stuck at home with nothing to do, so take a few minutes and do a couple of internet searches to see what God is doing right now in Egyptian and Iran, which is ancient Assyria. Type in the word Zabalin worship and check out some of the videos posted, and then look for a video called Sheep Among Wolves 2. You'll be amazed at what God is doing currently in these two places. Now, you may be going through a time of judgment right now, maybe personal or economic, or you might even be sick to your stomach because you think the leaders of your country are fools. But let me assure you that God's judgments are good. They bring hope and healing and restoration and salvation. You can trust him to bring you through each and every judgment you face. God bless you.